Joined now on the phone by the Sporting News is Mike Corsi to shed a little more light on Miles Bridges' decision. And Mike, I think it was pretty clear going into today that this is what he was going to decide. So I'm not going to ask you how surprised you are at this decision right now. But how surprised are you, take yourself back to, let's say, February or even last month, if someone would have told you, hey, Miles Bridges is going to bypass the draft and stick around for another year? You know, I would say that uh, in this decade, there have been very few players who were headed toward likely lottery positions, and who, especially who had, who, who weren't doing it on potential, but who had produced, and, and, and but still thought about it. And of all those players, uh, I would have thought that uh, that Miles would be one that would at least give it some thought. The, I, I talked to him on back way back in the uh, October on, at Media Day, at the Big Ten Media Day in, in D.C., and and he he had a different feel about his approach to college basketball than just about any of the elite players that I've dealt with. I mean, I've heard, I've had them tell me before, well, I'm not sure it's going to be one year. And, you know, sometimes that's a hedge and, you know, in case it doesn't go great or, and sometimes it's just a, you know, it's sort of a sell, like, I'm all in here while I'm here, but you and I know that I'm leaving. <laughs> but Miles was legit. Uh, he really was completely committed to Michigan State. I think he really enjoyed his year. And I think with the injury and with the, the, the other injuries that affected the team, I think that he thinks, he believes that there, are, there is more out there for him and more out there for the Spartans. Yeah, let's talk about this team. I mean, you think about the Big Ten next year. Obviously, Minnesota is going to be very good. Purdue, Northwestern, I think Michigan, depending on, you know, who comes back and who doesn't. But would you agree that this makes Michigan State the clear-cut Big Ten favorite going into next season? Honestly, Dave, I thought they were even when I was expecting him to go, even when I thought that that would be the place he'd go. I thought that with the core of the sophomores, uh, that with Nick Ward and and with you know Cassius Winston, I thought that the, you know, I thought that Josh Langford, I thought this team was was going to be really good anyway. And of course they get uh, they'll get uh, Gavin Schilling back up front to help Ward. And I thought they were headed that way anyway. Now they have a game-breaking player, the kind of player you can hang a Final Four run on. What did you learn from watching Tom Izzo throughout this process? Well, you know, Tom is very committed to his players, and I think he's handled this beautifully. And, of course, no surprise. Uh, I don't know that I've heard anything new because I've known him for 20 years, and, and he's been one of the best coaches and one of the best people to play for in the game. And he handled this really well. You always worry about injuries, but aside from that, do you see any potential downside here, Mike? I don't. I think one of the things you have to, that people have to remember is this is a very crowded class, a uh, very crowded, crowded draft class because the freshman class last season was so deep, and Miles was obviously part of that. But there are, there are incredible numbers uh, that, that are uncommon uh, relative to, to talent in 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 American high school classes and and so next year it's still you know it's a good group but it's not as deep it's not as strong uh, and so I think that Miles will have you know, like I said you don't play for Michigan State and, and you know barring injury you don't play for Michigan State and wind up worse off you get better. Mike Zacorsi of the Sporting News our colleague of course here at BTN as well. Mike thanks for your time tonight. Thank you very much Dave.